Better? Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? All right. So a few things here. Uh, I work for a company called Mendla. Uh, I mostly uh, do stuff with OpenStack nowadays, uh, doing software development and, and, and stuff like that. Uh, this has been like two years now, people, people that. I uh, did all sorts of uh, network engineering jobs for about 10 years. And a disclaimer, I'm not affiliated with the XA network, which is the company behind uh, XABGP. So I'm here to speak, speaking as a user of XABGP. So by the way, are there any anyone currently using XABGP or any, any, any stuff? One, two, one, three. Okay, so what is XOBGP? It's a highly uh, flexible speaker which you can uh, uh, use to programmatically announce whatever you like. It can also receive PCP updates from your routers and feed, it, feed those to your application in fast form. So basically, it takes care of all the intricacies of running PCP, so all the state machines that keep alive for all the protocol encoding. So you can concentrate on your application and take advantage of some, some nice stuff you can do with PGP. Uh, it supports many, many, many ad ad address families and, and subsequent address families, so you can announce, uh, in addition to the regular IPv4 and IPv6 routes, you can also announce L2, L2B and L3B and, and also full spectra for routes which are highly useful. So, uh, I'm sure most of you have heard about these other uh, open source PGP speakers such as Plaga or Bird. Uh, Exabit PGP should not be compared to those because XBGP doesn't uh, interact with, op with your operating system and it doesn't install any routes to your, uh, to your uh, operating system traffic data. Incidentally, it doesn't even do any best path selection, it just receives and sends PGP announcements. Uh, currently, it doesn't support uh, route server or route reflection features, although there has been some discussion of adding those. But the focus is clearly on providing a deep interface for your application to take advantage of PGP. So, how you can integrate, integrate with, PG, uh, with XBGP, the, mo the most simplest way is to actually put everything into the configuration file. All your neighbors or your announcement. But okay, that's pretty static. The real key feature here is to actually integrate with the XBGP and dynamically uh, announce stuff. So this works uh, uh, in a way that you, the XBGP will actually start your application as a sub-process and you just use standard out and standard in for communicating with XFPGP, basically using Unix pipes. Uh, there's a small error in, in my slide. You actually cannot uh, currently add neighbors on demand, but that, that should be coming at some point. So here is how you, how you configure this uh, simple case where you have a one router and a uh, application in, the, in this in this case it's just a simple shell script. It could be anything. You just configure the neighbor, all the parameters required, and then the magic happens in the process statement where you just say what program to run. And once XBGP starts, it starts your application, and you can start announcing stuff and also receiving stuff from it. XBGP. Uh, okay, the use cases, the probably most obvious use case here is to use XBGP to provide uh, reachable information uh, to your application, so basically any casted service. So we would run our application uh, from a, any IP address, which would be potentially announced by many different XBGP instances in different servers and in different locations. We would naturally put this IP address to our loopback device and then we need some kind of way to monitor our application and to tell XBGP when to announce and when to withdraw and, and, uh, and, and, and any best route. 
So here is a quick example of a really uh, simple shell script that does exactly exactly this. So it takes two parameters, the IP address and the next hop, and then some command to run. And and after that, this uh, we start a infinite loop. This is important because your your program should never exit because otherwise XBGD will actually try to restore it and after a few times it will give up and consider it as a fatal error and shut down completely. So your, your program should be continuously running. So here we have a loop that actually uh, executes the command uh, in every iteration and then we look at the exit value of, of, the, of, 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 the, of the command that was executed if it's okay, and we are currently in state down, we will announce announce the anycast uh, uh, route and and mark ourselves up. Vice versa, if we if if the command was not successfully ex executed and we are in state up, we will withdraw the announcement and mark ourselves down. So here is how you would use this in in configuration. We still have the the neighbor and what. But this time we give some parameters to our monitor shell script. So we essentially give it the, uh, the anycast IP, the next hop, which will be ourselves, ourselves and then uh, some command. In, in this example, I'm just running curl, trying to check if, if we have a working web server answering in localhost. So if, if the curl command would fail, the monitor shell script would withdraw the announcement. Okay, well, this has been just that for illustration, you should, shouldn't really implement that shell script because that's a so common use case. There's actually a built in solution in XBGT. It's called the help check module. Uh, it comes with the XBGT, so you don't have to basically code anything. Uh, it, has, it, it does exactly the same thing I showed, showed in my script, but it has some additional features. It can, for example, just uh, by default, it actually doesn't withdraw the route, it just makes it uh, less desirable that by adjusting the net value. You can change this behavior if you like. You can also reduce the route oscillation by providing rise and fall values. Uh, you can make it uh, automatically put the anycast IP to your loopback device so you don't have to take care of that. You can do logging and hooks. So it's a pretty nice. So here's uh, how we do use it. So we, we just invoke the health check and give it the same parameters earlier in slightly different form. There's the command, there's the, the, there's the anycast IP and the next stop. So this would do the exactly the same thing uh, I showed earlier. There are lots of uh, different configuration variables. You can, you can also use configuration paths with the health check module. Okay, moving on. Uh, I'd like to share uh, our, our experiences with uh, XPGP. So XPGP has been around for quite some time, uh, from 2009, I believe. So it's uh, Quite uh, established, very very stable. Uh, we haven't had a single problem with it. it. It just works. It's relatively easy to deploy. It's written in Python, but it has basically not no external dependencies. So you can just drop it in your server and start start using it if you have a Python uh, inter interpreter. Uh, by default, it actually doesn't even listen uh, in, in BGP port. Uh, you can make it listen, but well, I, I don't see, it, see any reason for that. Uh, so it doesn't require actually any, any privileges. So you can just stop using it uh, with unprivileged users. Um, so we've been using this. Uh, and help check for providing reachability uh, or high availability. Uh, we, in, we use it in tandem with HA proxy to monitor the uh, monitor the back, back end of, of the uh, of the 
service defined in the HA proxy. Recently, we had another uh, project that would also require any testing, so XVGD was again used. Uh, this project uh, is it's called NELB, which is our load balancer as a service uh, product. It's a distributed system with self-service public API. So, and all the load balancers are actually hosted in these agent nodes, and there are, can be multiple of, of, of those. And once you provision that load balancer, a dynamic uh, IP, IP addresses are randomly allocated, so we need a way to announce those host routes to our PE routers. And incidentally, those load balancers can come and go in, uh, when, it, when the user wants, so we need to react to these events quickly. And also, this system needs to be, we need to be a very, very uh, uh, tolerant for, for uh, crashes and uh, errors. So here is a high level view of the agent node. There's this uh, agent process that gets its uh, provisioning requests from the messaging service on the controller node. And it's, it starts and manages these load balancer processes. And each of those have a minimum of three IP addresses, so we need to uh, announce those to our PE routers. Uh, okay, how can we integrate XLBGP with this system? We already have an agent process running, so uh, we cannot make XLBGP start this agent process. So, so how would we solve this? Oh, okay, there are many solutions to to this problem, we could perhaps run a centralized XLBGD to announce uh, to announce these addresses on behalf of all the agent nodes. That's one way of doing that. Uh, we still went for, for uh, uh, deploying XLBGD on each agent node. Uh, so we wanted to decouple uh, XLBGD from, from the agent process. So I wrote a program called monitor that actually just translates the events from the agent process via Unix domain sort of connection to, a, to those XBGP commands. So this way, this way uh, there is literally no XBGP dependent code in the agent process, and the monitor takes care of, 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 of all that. So here is how it looks. If I manually start monitoring, monitor uh, program, i just tell a few parameters and how to connect to the, the, the uh, 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 agent process. And when it connects to the agent process, the, a the agent will replay the current state. This way, uh, we don't have to worry about which process starts before, before which. So, it's, uh, if the agent crashes and restarts, the monitor just reconnects and other way around. So in, in, in all cases, we announce whatever we should announce. And after the replay, the monitor starts waiting for new events. So here we can see that uh, a load balancer node was de deleted, so we uh, make this withdrawal announcement. And uh, after that, two more load balancers pop up, and we announce uh, runs for those. So, pretty straightforward. Uh, okay, these are uh, our be have been all uh, just uh, reachability use cases. There are also, of course, other use cases for XBGP. One of the most popular one might be the remotely triggered platforming. You can do that, it's very trivial. Uh, there's actually a nice looking software called BGP Commander that actually integrates uh, XBGP to ETCD or HCD. Uh, it's actually, uh, uh, if, if you don't know it, it's a VW store from, uh, uh, for, from developers are, uh, behind core OS. It's basically, so you can put your routes in the ETCD and the BGP, BGP commander will pick them up and again translate to the commands. Uh, 
one nice use case would be to uh, also inject call routes if your network supports call spec. Uh, unfortunately, the PGP implementer doesn't currently support injecting call routes, but I, I guess it would be easily added. If you prefer more uh, integrated solution, there's this really interesting uh, software from, from Paddle Odinsov or FastNetMod. It's actually an integrated solution for detecting denial of service attacks. You can uh, detect and close from S4, PPAP, or PFRIM sources and announce those black hole routes again via SPGP. Okay. Uh, well, SPGP is great, but for me, the, sometimes the interface with interfacing via sub processes feels a bit weird. So if, if, if you want a more integrated solution, there's also a recent alternative for uh, XBGP called the GoBGP. Uh, you, you can actually embed that in your Go application. So that, that's why I'm interested about it, on, on it because the NELB is actually written in Go language. So it would be, make sense to actually perhaps try it in implementing the PGP or with Go PGP. Uh, incidentally, uh, Go PGP also supports route reflection, route service, and it even has its own policy language. Uh, then if you are a Python developer, there's also a project called Ryu. It, it's, it has a nice clean Python API uh, for embedding PGP in your Python application comes from the same developers as, as, as Dolby. <coughs> and the last one is actually not a alternative rail, but it's an interesting project that actually is uh, kind of like using XABGP or embedding XABGP for generating uh, EEPM routes for, for actually making connectivity between uh, virtual machine, machines. It actually uses uh, OpenB switch for Integrate with OpenV switch to actually make these uh, uh, DSM panels. It's pretty interesting. Uh, okay, this has been my presentation. Uh, please check out the XPGP. It's really easy to get started. Um, thank you. Sorry to be predictable, Anton, but I think you need to select some uh, underclothing to uh, take I'm over. Or, I'm Here I am. Thank I'm you. Thank you. So, unusually, we're going to have a nice early coffee break because I've got a feeling you haven't had enough coffee today.